Hello, my most amazing artist, and welcome to Dinosaur Week, where all week long we are going to be making artwork that is dynamite. You see what I did there? Pretty good, right? So today we're gonna kick everything off with paleontologist portraits, pictures of ourselves as a paleontologist. We're using simple supplies, we're using paper, we're using markers, we're using crayons, color pencils. You can use whatever supplies that you want or have on hand. If you wanna use a combination of all those supplies, awesome it's called mixed media we're also going to do some texture exploration today so you might want to have some textures on hand i'm using fabric that has a texture but the sidewalk outside would be great maybe if you have a, a floor or a tabletop that has a texture just be really careful when you do the texture rubbing you don't want to get any crayons or anything on something important like a table i don't want mama upset with me all right guys before we start let's go ahead and do our art class catchphrase I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome. We're going to be using all of the elements of art today. All of them. We'll be using, say it with me, <clears throat> line, shape, color, baby, color. Form, mm -hmm. value, mm -hmm. texture, uh -huh. and space. And now I'd like to say a great big old shout out to our sponsors. We have our friend Sticks in Ticonderoga. I'll be using their paper today. It's called You Create Sketchbook Paper and it's my favorite because it's really, really thick. And if I paint on it, my paper doesn't get all wrinkly and weird. If I glue on it, it doesn't get all lumpy and bumpy. I love it. So thank you Dix and Ticonderoga for sponsoring and providing me with that paper to use. Our other sponsor today is a company called art to remember We've been making artwork that we want to remember forever, but it's hard to keep all of the artwork that we've been making. Did you know that with art to remember you can make your own online art gallery? That means you can share your artwork, let people see it all over the world. Then not only that, you can have your artwork printed on things like shirts or mugs or posters or stickers. The possibilities are endless. Thank you, Art to Remember, for being amazing and for sponsoring today's art class. All right, pinkies out, people. <clears throat> I pinky promise that no matter what, I will finish what I start. I will keep a positive attitude and I will do my best. Mwah! All right, guys, let's get started. All right, guys, today we're going to be drawing our paleontologist portraits. So to begin, I'm going to be drawing two versions, but you can make your portrait look any way you like. Sometimes you might want to follow along with me. Sometimes you might want to do something totally different. Because we're making a self-portrait or a picture of ourself, it might be helpful to have something like a mirror on hand so you can really look closely at your good looking self and see what makes you unique. Maybe you've got freckles or a mole or really curly hair, very straight hair, so take a good look so you can make your self-portrait just look just like yourself. Okay, so to start, I'm going to be drawing two versions. I'll be drawing one here on my dry erase board and then I'll do an instant replay. You guys know I do that a lot. I'll be doing that right here. So to get started, let's go ahead and find the middle of our paper. Find the middle of your paper and once you've got the middle of your paper, we're gonna be starting with the brim of the hat. We're gonna be making a big curve just like this. We're gonna be making the brim of your hat. So once you find the middle of your paper, go up just a little bit because as you can see, the brim of my hat isn't in the middle. And then I'm gonna make a great big old windshield wiper kind of line. Look like my finger is a windshield wiper. It's going back and forth. I'm making that kind of curved line. I'll be starting at one end and I'll go all the way over to the other end. Sometimes it's a little tricky to do that. So to help you out a little bit, once you've found the middle and you've gone up, go ahead and move your finger over to one side and put a little polka dot there. Then go straight across to the other side and put a little polka dot there. Those are our guidelines. They don't have to be big. 
Now I'm going to make a line that goes from here to there. Notice it's not a straight line. It's got a curve to it. It's not curvy. It's just got a curve to it. There we go. Now let's make the side of our hat. Now I did say I'd be doing an instant replay here, so I guess I should be doing that. Found the middle, went up a little bit, put a couple of polka dots on the side, made a curved but not a straight line. Awesome. Now I'm going to be making the sides of the hat and they curve in just a little bit. So I'm gonna curve in just a little bit like this. Ooh. Kind of like half of a rainbow, isn't it? So I guess I'll have the other half of the rainbow end up over here. Ooh. All right, instant replay. Remember, it's good to just watch me here and then follow along or draw along with me here. There we go. Now I'm going to be taking my marker and drawing a line that's parallel. That means it's doing the exact same thing as this one right here. So right here, I'm making a parallel line. It's a copycat kind of line. It's going all the way over to the other side of that rainbow curve. So starting here, going all the way over. There we go. All right, now we have a nice brim to our hat that'll keep the sun out of our eyes. Next step, I'm going to make a nice arch like a rainbow, an arch like a rainbow for the top of my hat. But just to give me an idea of where to start and stop, I think I'll put a little polka dot right there. Looks like a little bug crawling along and a little polka dot right there. And then that way I know when I bring my rainbow up, I go up, not quite to the top, but really close and down. All right, instant replay. A little bug crawling right there and a little, little bug crawling right there. And then I'll go ahead and make a line that goes up and over and down. Now for the top of my hat, if you have room, you can add a little curve right there. I barely have any space at the top, hopefully. I barely have any space, but I can make it work. Now let's go ahead and add another line here. There we go. Notice now I have three parallel lines. Three lines that are all this kind of curved shape. They're all copying one another. They're doing the exact same thing. I'm going to use some texture since we're using the elements of art. We're using line. We've created shapes by closing our lines and lines and shapes can be used to create texture. Now, if you touch your paper, it doesn't have a texture. This kind of texture that you draw so that when somebody looks at it, they see it, that's called implied texture. You're implying or giving the idea that there is texture there. Just adding a couple of more details to my safari hat. If you want to add them, you can. This is your safari hat. You draw whatever that you like. I'm gonna go ahead and draw some little air holes because it might get hot outside. My head needs to breathe so my brain doesn't overheat. You know what, on this one, I think I'm just going to leave it. Next up, we're going to draw our magnifying glass. A magnifying glass makes things magnified or bigger. It helps you see really, really small things because it enlarges them. And sometimes when you're using it, it enlarges you. Your eye might look a little bit bigger than it actually is. So to make that happen, we're first going to draw our magnifying glass, and then we're going to draw a eye that's out of proportion or out of scale. It's bigger than the rest of us, and that will create the illusion that we're using a magnifying glass. So I'm going to be drawing a magnifying glass with a circle. I'm going to be drawing it right here under the brim of my hat. And notice with my finger, I'm drawing it and my magnifying glass is not little. It's pretty big. If it makes you feel better to trace something, you could always trace something, but I really think that you don't need to do that. You could just draw it with your finger a couple of times get an idea for size and then go for it. So you might wanna watch me first. I'm drawing it under my hat, but it's not in the middle. It's over to the side a little bit. Okay, I'll try it again here. So it's not directly in the middle, it's over to the side and it's a nice big circle. 
Now, if you made your circle a little too small, then when you draw the next circle, draw it on the outside. If you draw, drew your circle kind of big, then when you draw this next circle, go ahead and draw it on the inside. You are the artist. It is up to you. All right, now let's go ahead and magnify our eye. Let's make our eye look really big. And maybe you're seeing something that surprises you. Maybe you're seeing something that makes you happy. So think about what kind of eye you want to draw. If you're drawing an eye that surprises you, I'll draw that one here, and I'll draw this one right there. So I'm gonna draw a nice big circle, almost as big as my magnifying glass. Then I'm going to draw the inside of the eye, the iris, the colorful part of my eye. And then inside of that, I'm going to draw my pupil. That's the place I see with. My pupil is what I see with, I'll color that in. I'll add maybe some eyelashes, and now kind of looks like a big SpongeBob eye. I've got that really surprised, enlarged eye. I probably could have even made it a little bit bigger. For this one, I think I'll draw my eye more realistic, less like a cartoon, using a curved line like a rainbow. Then I'm having an opposite of that, a reflection of that line. Draw my iris, the colorful part of my eye. And I want to look surprised, so I want to have a lot of the white part of my eye showing and my pupil. Eyelashes, if I want to. You don't have to. You are the artist. All right, now let's draw the rest of our face. Now the rest of our face isn't going to be this large. This was magnified. So why don't we do this? Let's draw. When you use a magnifying glass, you usually have to close one eye and keep this eye open, the one that you're looking through the glass with. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this eye by drawing a little curve. Notice it's a lot smaller than this eye. Whoop, 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 whoop. Maybe some eyelashes and maybe an eyebrow. Okay, maybe I'll really exaggerate it on this one and make this eye really little. Wow, look how magnified that eye looks. Couple of eyelashes if I want them, and an eyebrow. Awesome, now we can work on the nose. You can draw your nose any way you like. However, your nose is kind of being hidden by your magnifying glass. So maybe there's only a little bit of it showing. I'm gonna draw a little button nose, a little circle right there, boop. Let's see, I don't really have a lot of room. Maybe I'll put a little half curve line right there. There we go. Now it's being overlapped by the magnifying glass. That's why we can't see it completely. Next up is the mouth. Maybe in this one, I'm surprised by what I see. So my mouth is like this. <gasps> what in the world is that? My tongue might be in there, boop, boop. I could add some teeth if I want to. Maybe I'm missing a tooth. And then I can always add some color, baby, color. Oh my goodness, that looks so funny to me. Okay, this one, she's happy or surprised or smiling, so I'm gonna give her a mouth. Maybe she's got it kind of like this. So she's got her mouth closed. You could always open it by drawing another line here. Notice that the magnifying glass is overlapping it. It's in front of it. That's how we're able to show space or depth in our artwork, and space is another element of art. All right, now let's work on the chinny, chin, chin. So I'm gonna draw a little curve right here where I want my chin to go. I'll draw a little curve right here where I want my chin to go. And then I'm gonna start up here, starting up here at my hat, and I'm gonna make a big sweeping line that comes down. So you might wanna go ahead and put a little polka dot where you want the side of the face to be, so you can make that line that comes down. There we go. Now I know our hat looks really big, it's okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and leave this side. Oh, no I'm not, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one up. Whoop. There we go. All right, so I'm doing the same thing, starting here, going down. This mouth is open so the face is longer because the jaw has dropped. Awesome, okay, now I'm gonna add my ear over here, I can only see one. Now, before we add our hair, let's go ahead and add our outfit. 
If you're out working and you're doing a dig, you're probably gonna wear something that's comfortable and you're also gonna wear something that has lots of pockets so you can keep your pencil and your notebook and all of that stuff. So today, instead of making a curve line here, I'm gonna make a collared shirt. So I'm gonna make a letter V, again, neck, neck, and you may have room to draw everything that I'm about to draw, but you might not, and that's okay. Okay, next up are my shoulders. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge of my paper on one side only. Now, on this side, let's draw this part of our magnifying glass, the handle. All right, I went down, but not quite too long because my hand is going to be holding the handle. That's why it's called the handle, cause that's where your hand goes. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my handle, my hand with an oval here because I'm holding it like this. And then you can see a little bit of my thumb here. And then I can just bring this down if I missed anything. And then for my arm, I'll draw lines that go down. All right, so instant replay. I keep switching where I'm doing instant replay. Oval, nice and big, thumb, and wrist. Okay, now that I have that, I'm missing this part of my body. That's strange. I'm just gonna make my shoulder, but I want it to have the illusion that this hand is overlapping or in front. So notice how my shoulder stopped when it got to my hand. Now let's work on that collared shirt. I'm gonna make it into a Y. I'll add a zigzag over here. Boop, boop, boop. It's kind of like a W actually. In fact, it might be easier if I turn my hand a little bit to make that W. So I first made a Y, then a, a W. Oh yeah, it really looks like a W there. Then if you wanna add any details, if you wanna turn it into a vest, if you wanna add a couple of buttons, it's up to you. You are the artist. If you wanna leave it the way that it is, that's fine too. Okay, next up is hair. So for my hair, gosh, there's all sorts of different ways I could wear it, but you know what? Today, I think I'm gonna put it in braids. So I'm just doing a couple of bumps like this. Or, you know, it could be long hair and I just end it right there. Maybe it's down my back. I'm gonna add another braid over here. Maybe add a little place where I can tie it at the end. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe this one, it's being overlapped a little bit so you can't see it all the way there. Cool, okay, now that this is all finished, maybe I can add some hair on this dude. Maybe he's got straight hair, it's kind of long, it's a little zigzaggedy. You are the artist. Think about what your hair looks like. Now we can start to add color, baby, color. How did your paleontologist portrait turn out? I know it looks amazing. And I bet it looks really funny with your eye magnified by the magnifying glass. All right guys, let's add some color. Time to color. I'll be using crayons to color with. You use whatever supplies that you have or enjoy using. You could even use a combination of supplies. When you do something like that, it's called mixed media. I'm using crayons and crayons are amazing because you can do a lot of cool things with them. One thing is, is that you can show a bunch of different values. If you notice, underneath the brim of the hat and underneath the chin, I pressed a little harder with my crayon. I did that to create a darker value. This created the illusion of a shadow and it also helped to make my artwork not look so flat, but to look more three-dimensional, to have Form. The other thing I like to do is oftentimes I'll overlap a couple of different colors of crayons, like I did for the cheek, and like I could do for the eye to show a couple of different colors. Then there's other kinds of tricks that you can do with your crayons, like creating different kinds of texture. Texture you can create by either drawing it, like I'm doing here, with a loop-de-loop -loop line to show the texture of the hair, or by doing something called a texture rubbing. To create a texture rubbing, you'll want to find something in your home that has a texture, like a fabric, 
the floor, the sidewalk outside. Ooh, even leaves. Oh my goodness. Go outside and turn some leaves over to the back where you can see the veins. You'll be amazed by the texture you see. Then try sliding that texture under your paper. Use a crayon that doesn't have any paper on it to do a rubbing. When you do a rubbing, it's important that you hold the crayon like it's shh, sleeping, and then do the rubbing that way. It helps if you press really firmly when you're doing a rubbing so that the texture underneath shows up. Ooh, I love the idea of doing leaves underneath. That would be amazing for the background. Now what I'm doing is just coloring my shirt, color the brim of my hat, and maybe consider doing more texture rubbing in the background. You can create your background any way you want. Maybe you want to show that there's dinosaur bones in the background. Perhaps it's a sunny day, so you want to show the sky, or you want to create a texture like me. No matter what you decide, I know your paleontologist portrait will turn out amazing. And if you had fun creating it, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because there's all sorts of fun Dinosaur Week videos coming your way as well as all the other themed weeks we've had. Have so much fun, guys. Talk to you soon.